Welcome to the course Pattern Making Technique 1 Menswear. In this course, you will understand the concepts of pattern making techniques for menswear and learn how to make patterns for basic shirt and trouser. The theoretical knowledge and practical exposure given in this course will enable you to make patterns of your own. The first unit introduction to pattern making comprises of five modules and a final review section that makes you to produce patterns for different measurements and styles. By the end of this unit, students will be able to distinguish menswear, describe menswear patterns, identify various body types for men, recall appropriate terms used in pattern making, list standard measurements used in various body types for pattern making, match a tool for an appropriate function. The first module introduces you to menswear. Menswear has traditionally been simple and straightforward. However, in recent years, men's styling has changed significantly due to male consumers' increased desire for new modern style. This makes it necessary to identify the need for a tool to facilitate a more comprehensive understanding for menswear styling details compared to the tools used in women's way. Although menswear traditionally employed relatively simple designs and silhouettes compared to women's way, rapid changes in fashion trends began to climb an over growing share of the menswear market. This trend dramatically influenced industry standards and created a high trend awareness among male consumers, creating interest in male fa fashion and appearance. Thus, the marketing strategy for menswear became more detailed and fashion oriented and the modern style niche was born. Obviously, men have different body shape from women and thus pattern for men cannot be altered using women's pattern making methods which dominate the pattern making reference market. Most noticeably, men's main fashion concerns vary greatly from those of women. Women's wear largely aims to make wearers look and feel petite and attractive, but men's wear strives to display a masculine appearance. Measuring properly is often a challenge for learners, but this course addresses this problem by providing instructional pictures that illustrate key measurement locations. As the male anatomy presents several issues such as the chest, broad shoulders, thick waist, each requiring their own unique pattern making methods, this course addresses these issues. The key locations shown in the pictures allows candidate to measure properly on all body types. Manual pattern making is a diagrammatic representation of the way of the parts of a garment. For example, front, back, yoke, sleeve, cuffs, etc. are constructed in pattern making. This delivers the working plan to produce garment. The process involves taking measurements from a person, body, body form or standard measurement chart. Patterns can be developed by adopting various methods, techniques as per the suitability and convenience of garment variant. These are the variants widely adopted in the garment industry, which are as follows, pattern drafting, pattern draping and flat pattern making. Pattern drafting using actual body size or standard measurement chart derived from anthropometric studies, pattern draping using standard body form of required size, flat pattern making using basic set of pattern slopers developed with standard measurements. In this course, the pattern draft technique will be used for developing the patterns, flat sketches, Unlike illustrations, 
provide better instruction by clearly showing details and accurate proportions. Flat sketches serve as a communication tool between design and pattern making. Alphabetical instruction codes were used as a means to provide easy understanding of instructions. In pattern making, some of the important abbreviations used which we should be familiar like CF center front, CB center back, SS side seam, HSP or HPS, high shoulder point or I point shoulder, CBL center back length, CFL center front length, FL full length, CH chest, HBL horizontal balance line, AH hormone, WA wrist arc, BP bust point, SH shoulder, SH TIP shoulder tip, GL grain line, SLV sleeve, AB abdomen, SM seam, JT joint, TH thigh, KN knee, WR wrist, ELB elbow. Alphabetical abbreviations were developed in order to foster ease of use during pattern making. In the line went up. Standard size 38 shirt and size 32 pant measurements are referred. This will be useful to learners who are focused on practicing design details and who do not wish to develop personalized patterns. Now let us move to review the importance of body types in pattern making. A body type is the relationship of human body shape to body size. Every physical characteristic in a person, physic can be determining factor of the body type, whether it is height, weight or lower to upper body ratio. Compared to women's bodies, men's bodies are generally taller and have wider shoulders, narrower hips, a lower position of the waist and higher position of the knees. Additionally, the form of muscle and bone is more prominent because men typically have less body fat than women. The distribution of body fat is more in the upper torso rather than the lower torso and in the abdomen rather than the hips. Usually three body types being followed in men's wear pattern making are ectomorph, mesomorph and endomorph. Ectomorph Slim features are lean, flat chest, small chest. Mesomorph, standard features are well defined, hard body, wider shoulder, bigger chest. Endomorph, round features are round, short and stocky, hip, waist and shoulder similar. In the industry, each clothing Brand has a unique body chart that fits the self concept of the brand. Typically, brands have developed their own measurement standards in sizes like SML, XL. These are based on three height groups significantly short, regular, and tall. This module reviews the terms used in pattern making. 
the explanation of these terms comprises the terms most commonly used. Pattern making is a highly developed technical skill requiring precision in the drafting and development process. It also necessitates an understanding of body proportions and their measurements. Ease allowance is the excess provided in the pattern for body movements based on fits. For example, slim fit, medium fit and loose fit. Seam is the joint that appears at every alignment of the garment parts. For example, hamul seam, side seam, shoulder seam, etc. Seam finishes uh, given in trouser. This kind of seams you find in trouser, normally in formal ways, where side seams and uh, back rise and inseam, given open seam with the overlock. Seam finishes given in trouser, formal wear, where the edges of the side seam and inseam will be overlocked after sewing opened and pressed to make you know flat so that the finishes on outside will be neat and flat. In informal trousers or pants, side seams and inseams finished with the flat felt seam that will look like this and other side will be like this which hidden the you know raw edges of the side seam and uh, inseam. Uh, shirt finishes in the sides and a harm hole can be done using overlock as shown this sample which is uh, finished with you know 5 thread overlock. Application of uh, trimmer can be used to trim the excess threads like this, like this, which is uh, normally used by operators, tilers. Then to seam ripper, seam ripper can be used to remove the stitches, stitches using the the pointed tip to lift the yarns it can be removed like this so that the stitch will come out and other side you can shift and lift the thread of the under bobbin so that stitch will, will be get break and removed easily. This, this function can be done using the seam ripper. Arch. Seam finishes normally given in uh, Pant, side seam and inseam and shirt side seam and a harm hole, which we call flat fell seam. Normally in shirts used in uh, side seam and harm hole, trouser out seam and inseam. The seam allowance will be here 3 by 4 and here 3 by 8. So which can be stitched. by feeding as I shown in the demo which will be put 
slapped one another and stitched stitched here with the specialized machine or it can be done single needle lock stitch machine can be finished with the double needle as well as single needle lock stitch machines this can be shown double needle as well as single needle when you turn and see the other side of the fabric this will be flat stitch will be visible so this this finish is called flat felt seam the seam allowance will be like this Third side, side seam can be finished with this sorts of finishes which is called a French seam or in local term it is in and out which is finished with the two operation first stitched in right side then turned to wrong side and given you know 3 by 8 inch with stitches so that the raw edge will be covered. This is called uh, in and out or French seam. Coming to Hamul, as I explained, as I explained, flat felt seam, which I have also shown in the pattern, flat felt seam stitched with the help of feed of arm, or if it is single lock stitch, lock stitch machine, it can be done with the two operations. seam allowance the fabric margin allowed to be seven to make a seam for example joining of front and back at sides of the garment dot is a cone shaped piece of fabric that is seven together tapering to a point to fit the body dot allowance is the excess provided to form a dot for example waist dot provided at waistline in the back leg and uh, back shirt dots. Dot intake is the amount of excess provided to stitch a dot. Dot legs are the lines that indicate the sew line of the dot. Vanishing point is the point where the stitch line of the dot ends. Dot cap is the shape that appears after truing of the dot. Structure of a dot. Dot is comprising of uh, comprising of uh, dot legs. dot intake, the amount of uh, allowance we use to construct a dot is called dot intake. Dot intake, dot allowance, dot excess is all same. When you fold the dot and stitch, then open the dot, you get a cap shape structure here. It happens in pattern, is called, is called dot cap.
dot cap. The amount of fabric we use here is a dot intake. The dot get vanishes is called a dot vanishing point. Dot vanishing point. In dots, you have various types of uh, dot, which, which is a huge chapter. Selecting appropriate dot is very important. In our case, in menswear, we have a dot which is placed in the trouser, trouser back, that is a waist dot, back, back waist dot. back waist dot. Yeah. Pleats are overlapping fabric that is unpressed to fall softly or partially stitch it for a crisp finish to provide ease. Cap ease is the excess provided in the sleeve pattern to accommodate smooth harmful curve while attaching the sleeve to the body in stipulated stretch. Cap height is the depth provided from sleeve top to bicep. Hamul is the round opening where sleeve is sewn. Bicep is the upper arm, also called muzzle. Elbow is the circumference of the sleeve at a elbow level. Wrist is the circumference of the sleeve at the wrist level. Blending is the process to blend two angular lines into smooth line. Truing is the process of joining two or more marking on the pattern for fabric. Selvage is the two finished edges in a fabric to avoid raveling of the yarn. Grain line corresponding to the weaves of fabric. Length grains are parallel to the selvage of the fabric and are perpendicular to the flow. They are called the warp. Cross grains are perpendicular to the selvage and parallel to the flow. These are called the weft. Bias grain is the off grain with various angles to the selvage. True bias is also off grain with 45 degree angle to the selvage. Grain lines are indicated in pattern to show the direction of the pattern to be laid in the uh, fabric so that the direction of the warp weft weaves can be identified easily. For example, if you take a piece of fabric, you have uh, edges, uh, horizontal edges, vertical edges. and 45 degree to vertical edges. So, normally the garment made out of three directions, either the cross grain or vertical grain, then 45 degree to bias grain. Normally in menswear, we use uh, length grain. For example, uh, we put some length grain in horizontal places too, which is uh, in shirt yoke. The when you take a piece of fabric, the edge of vertical grain is a selvage, selvage which is a closely woven finished edge, which is there in the fabric. You can clear closely, when you watch closely, you can, you can make out it is a closely woven finished edge. The parallel to, parallel to selvage grain is a length grain is uh, also called also called warp grain 
majority of the garment made uh, made out of made out of warp grain or length grain warp grain then the garment the parts cut in cross grain which is perpendicular to selvage is a cross grain we use very minimal in menswear garments coming to bias grain is also a styling feature design feature which gives uh, some you know design elements like you know bias yoke in shirt we can have if fabric is checks you can cut the grain line in bias so that uh, the checks grains will be criss crossed so there are three types of grains length grain which is parallel to selvage cross grain which is perpendicular to selvage then 45 degree true bias is uh, bias grain yeah notch is a short line or notch positioned on seams fold lines balancing of parts etc horizontal balance line is the line provided on the pattern to control the balance of the garment side seam is situated at the sides of the garments for example shirt side seam trouser side seam etc in seam is the seam that is located under the arm and legs for example under arm of the sleeve and in leg of the trouser placket is the finished edge of the front opening sleeve opening etc for example front placket and the sleeve placket collar is a piece of fabric of various sizes and shapes woven into the neckline of a garment collar band is the part of the collar which allows to take the role of the collar cuff is the part of the sleeve given to encircle the wrist of the arm yoke is a separate seamed portion of the garment across the front and back shoulder opening is a functional means of getting into a garment normally in menswear the following collar types been used or you can find you know very commonly in all brands for example button down collar cut away collar wing collar mandarin collar and roll collar which is one piece collar when you get into the cuff types you find following cuff types in menswear bit commonly compared to other categories of course which will be there in all the brands and categories for example square cuffs will be there in semi casual round cuff and of course square cuff with slim width will be there in formal and french cuffs will be there in formal and semi casual shirts normally we find the pockets in menswear provided in the shirt with casual and semi formal and formal round pocket will be 
found in semi-formal and formal. Sometimes formal shirts does not have pocket at all. The other pockets found in semi-casual shirts are V-cut pocket, square pocket and diamond cut pockets. These are all located at the chest level so that it is called chest pocket. Now let us move on to standard measurements. The measurements are in proportion in respect to age. This can be categorized by height and girth. This chart gives the standard measurement being used in ready to wear garments in India. Measurements In pattern making measurements are considered as very important factor to achieve perfection and uh, fit measurement perfection is an very important understanding measurements also is a uh, essential before starting the pattern making pattern making involves with body measurement which can be measured with inches as well as centimeter and millimeters normally we use centimeters and millimeters or else inches and inches divisions. We should be familiar with inches into centimeters or vice versa. Now in a measure, measuring tape we have two sides. One side it is indicated with the centimeter and millimeter and other side indicated with inches and divisions. In measurement tape every inches comprising of 8 divisions. So, it is considered 8 divisions in an inch. Of course, some measuring tape also comes with 16th divisions whereas, the centimeter side we have centimeter and millimeters. We should be familiar with the measurement basic conversions as we aware 1 centimeter equal to 10 millimeter. Hundred centimeter is equal to 1 meter. One inch is equal to two point five four centimeter. So you can convert, you can when you divide two point five four into two hundred centimeter, you get meter in inches. One yard we have practice of measuring fabric in yards. So, 1 yard is equal to 90 inches which multiplied by 2.54 you get in centimeter which is 91.4 centimeters. So, this basic conversion is required in pattern making because you deals with uh, paper and of course, fabric consumptions. Coming to divisions, if you see the measuring tape, you have millimeter and centimeters which is easier whereas, 
if you work with inches you have you deals with sometimes 1 by 32 divisions too so you should be familiar with what is 1/8 an inch what is 1/16 an inch and what is 1/32 an inch so i'll just give you a illustration about divisions in inches let us uh, presume 1 inch length of fabric or uh, measuring tape so i just maximized to this length where i'm going to have 8 divisions and 16 divisions which are normally used in pattern making let me first go to 8 divisions 8 equal divisions considered 1/8 inch starting from 0 to first division is 1/8 inch starting from 0 to second division considered as 2/8 an inch which is also equal to 1 by 4 which is 1/4 of 1 inch coming to third division is called 3 by 8 then fourth division is 4 by 8 which is also considered as half an inch that is 1 by 2 after half an inch 5 by 8 then 6 by 8 an inch is also called 3 by 4 or 3/4 of an inch then 7 by 8 then 8 by 8 which is equal to 1 inch second division is 1/4 fourth division is half an inch sixth division is 3/4 and eighth division is 1 inch this you should be very very familiar to apply divisions of measurement coming to 1 by 32 half of half of 1 by 8 will be 1 by 16 so every midpoint of eighth division is 16th division i'm showing upward which is uh, indicates 16th division just you need to familiar with this measurement sometimes it's important to give accurate measurement for example the dot intakes the length of the dots or some important uh, measurements in 
pocket opening etc. So, here from 0 to first division will be 1 by 16, then 2 by 16 which is equal to 1 by 8, then 3 by 16, then 4 by 16 which is equal to 1 fourth an inch, 5 by 16, 6 by 16, 7 by 16, 6 by 16 is equal to 3 by 8, 8 by 16 equal to half an inch, then 9 by 16, 10 by 16, 5 by 8, 11 by 16, 12 by 16, in 16 division 12 by 16 is equal to 3 fourth inch, 13 by 16, 14 by 16, 14 by 16 is uh, 7 by 8, then 15 by 16 and 16 by 16 equal to 1 inch. So, this uh, divi these divisions are very important to understand whereas, in centimeter and millimeter it is uh, easy every centimeter has uh, 10 millimeters. So, you need to understand this better before starting or applying any measurements in pattern making. In pattern making normally we use uh, two types of measurements vertical measurements which deals with all the length measurements and uh, horizontal measurements which deals with uh, cross measurements, across measurements etc. Of course, the girth measurement is also considered as horizontal. We have vertical measurements for example, the HSP to waist center back to waist, center back to waist, then HSP to chest, HSP to hip, HSP to crotch etcetera. These are all considered as a length measurement center front neck to waist, center back neck to waist, center back neck to hip, center back or uh, waist to hip, side seam measurement, hormone depth, it is all considered as a length measurement or vertical measurement. Coming to cross measurement, you have across shoulder, across shoulder of a across shoulder point to point, across back at arm hole, across chest one inch below arm hole, across front waist across back waist, across hip, back hip, across front hip etcetera. In taking measurement using standard length and cross measurement is an important which will be given in your text part of the e-learning. So, you can be familiar, familiar with the measurements. Vertical and horizontal measurement for the legs, we have crotch depth that should be measured from center front, center waist to intersection of the inseam or it can be also measured straight take 1 inch below crotch level. Coming to side seam, from mid tip 
to all the way go to ankle and of course to heel both the measurement can be considered moving to back rise or back crotch mid tip and take the level of crotch 1 inch below that is intersection of uh, inseam at crotch 1 inch below from that can be considered. Getting to hip depth can be marked 8 inch 7 and half to 8 inch for size 38 mark here 8 inch center front 8 inch then side seam 8 inch or in centimeter also you can measure and center back 8 inch. So, all the sides you can mark 8 inch and uh, measure hip across. Coming to girth measurements, as I told it is a waist arc from center front line to side seam, then side seam to center back. Same way 8 inch below, center front to side seam, then side seam to center back for the hip measurement, which should be measured 8 inch below. Getting into thigh measurement, thigh circumference, you can measure separately if you are using dress form, front thigh and back thigh, front leg and back leg or else it should be measured 1 inch below and measure gently to take the circumference exactly. Then coming to knee, again you mark the vertical measurement that is 60 centimeter below waistline for this size, then measure the knee circumference, measure generously so that measurement would not be having any errors. Coming to side C measurement, take two measurements ankle and heel, then take two circumference measurement at ankle level and heel level. With this vertical and horizontal measurement is uh, concluded. If you are working with a model or customized, you have to take measurement accurately wearing the fits garments so that measurement can be taken. If you are working with uh, the dress forms in the lab, yes you can use uh, dress forms. Dress form will have designated place like center back, side seams, uh, center back, center front, crotch line, uh, inseam etc. Whereas uh, work, work with you know model in customized tailoring. It is preferable to inform the client to wear tights so that you can take you know accurate measurement in case of structured garment. If it is a medium fit and loose fit garments, yes you can uh, still prefer to have uh, fitted garments. So, with this the measurement uh, and divisions is concluded. Thank you. Before starting a pattern making, we need to thoroughly understand the specification sheet which comprising of detailed elements of all the parts both in front and back and measurements, stitching details, shape details etc. In the shirt pattern which we followed in this demonstration, we have 
given this specification sheet which comprising of following measurements. The size of the full sleeve shirt is 38 in numeric and size m in alpha. Later on we may grade to other sizes. The measurement given here to make the pattern is chest 2.5 centimeter below hormone 112, waist 17.5 centimeter below hormone 108 centimeter. Hem or it is also called sweep circumference 112 centimeter. Across shoulder 47 centimeter. This case we are applying half of this when we make the pattern. Center back length 75 centimeter. Yoke width at center back 10 centimeter. Hamul in curve 48 centimeter. Collar opening button to button wall 39 centimeter. Sleeve length excluding curve 56 centimeter. Pocket length and width 13 into 12 centimeter. Pocket placement from eye shoulder point is 23 centimeter. Pocket placement from center front 6 centimeter. Cuff opening button to button wall 26 centimeter. Cuff width 6 centimeter, front placket width 4 centimeter, sleeve placket length and width 15 into 2.5 centimeter. Short sleeve given in this specification is except sleeve length and sleeve opening, rest of the measurements are same as the long sleeve measurements. Short sleeve length would be 23.5 centimeter into 36 centimeter. The measurements for the trouser being followed in this pattern development are waist circumference 81 centimeter. Here the size of the trouser would be 32. Hip circumference 7.5 inch below waistline. 100 centimeter, thigh circumference 61 centimeter, side seam length excluding waistband 100 centimeter, crotch depth excluding waistband 28 centimeter, knee circumference 12 inch below crotch 48 centimeter. Hem circumference 42 centimeter, inseam 72.5 centimeter, waistband 4 centimeter, belt loop length and width 
phi into 1 centimeter, back weld pocket length into width 13 centimeter into 1.2 centimeter. Following measurements have been used to draft kurta just 2.5 centimeter below hamol 112 centimeter waist 17.5 centimeter below hamol 108 centimeter hip circumference 114 centimeter hem circumference 144 centimeter across shoulder 47 centimeter center back length 102 centimeter hamul curve 48 centimeter collar opening which should be measured button to button hole 39 centimeter sleeve length 61 centimeter side seam slit 41 centimeter pocket placement from hamul 14.5 centimeter side pocket opening 16 centimeter sleeve hem opening 33 centimeter side pocket bag length into width 30.5 into 17 centimeter. Specification for the pyjama. Pyjama will have two way circumference which is pattern circumference and garment circumference. In garment it would be relaxed in pattern it would be extended waist circumference relaxed 81 centimeter waist circumference extended 104 centimeter hip circumference 18.5 centimeter below waistline 116 centimeter Thigh circumference 71 centimeter. Side seam length including waistband 102 centimeter. Crotch depth excluding waistband 32 centimeter. Knee circumference 30 centimeter below crotch 62 centimeter. Bottom circumference 54 centimeter waistband width 4 centimeter side seam pocket back length into width 31 centimeter into 7.5 centimeter side seam pocket opening 15.5 centimeter back pocket length into width which is optional 14 centimeter into 13 centimeter. Finally, let us learn about the supplies and tools used in pattern making as well their applications. Supplies, pattern paper, muslin fabric, pencil, preferably regular pencils, erasers, cello tape, sharpener, push pins, draping pins, Tools are essential to get accurate patterns and measurements which are comprising rulers, measure tape, foot ruler, 2 and 4 foot, L scale, triangles, set square 45 and 90 degree scissors, paper scissors 6 inch, fabric scissors 10 inch and trimmer. Curve vary, French curve, hip curve, other tools, tracing wheel, notch player, owl, seam ripper, stapler, 
The applications and uses of these tools will be shown while drafting patterns. Any compromise leads to error such as disproportionate measurements, faulty curves and ill fits. Now I am going to demonstrate the correct application of tools and explain their importance in pattern making. Rulers. We have uh, one foot ruler, six inch ruler, then uh, two foot rulers and rulers with the divisions. All can be used in appropriate places which are relevant to applications. Triangles is uh, very important to have the perfection in drawing uh, square lines that is the perpendicular lines. For example, uh, 90 degree angles, 90 degree angles with uh, Ninety degree angles. Any where you want to give the forty five degree angle, it's a ninety degree angle and forty five degree angle. Of course, you also have 30 degree angle and 90 degree angle. Ninety degree angle and 30 degree angle. Set squares we often use in pattern development. Any curve lines or any starting point start with the right angle then takes a curve or straight line. So, it is considered very very important in pattern development. Scissors. Scissors is also an important tool in cutting of fabrics and uh, paper because it is a uh, pattern development as well as paper cutting. Fabric scissors. Fabric scissors are used to cut fabric. It is uh, made to cut the fabrics it the size of the measure, size of the scissor will be 8 to 10 inches which is suitable to cut fabrics you get various types of scissors uh, with the uh, brass handle and the st steel blades which can be appropriate to cut fabrics then paper cutting scissor or uh, use it to cut papers which is shorter than fabric cutting scissor with, because paper is uh, stiff and you know thinner than the fabrics sometimes thinner than the fabric it is not always sometimes. So, it is uh, advisable to use you know lesser uh, length uh, scissors which is uh, six, 5 to 6 inches scissors. This has you know plastic handle and you know steel blades. Then trimmer, we use a trimmer to cut small threads, small threads and you know small uh, fabric notches. Of course, in pattern making also we can uh, give a small cut in the paper. Coming to curve vary, we have French curve, we 
various types of uh, French curve, various uh, brands uh, use it to use it to draw uh, necklines. For example, uh, you have necklines, you have necklines in the pattern development. See, it, it, it will be placed like curve vary. We have various curves, curve tools in pattern making. Uh, our body shapes are uh, not angular, it is a curve shaped uh, patterns to be developed. So, hence we use various types of curve vary in which uh, French curve, an important uh, tool to give perfect curve lines. For example, neckline and harm hole, just I will show in the board. I am, I am going to develop a neckline and a harm hole. As I told, you know, any curve line start with uh, right angle, then you know takes a curve. For example, here this uh, is a back hip uh, neckline can be curved using a French curve, and the front neckline curved using French curve like this you get a uh, neckline which is perfect. Of course, it can be also developed uh, freehand, but it is uh, advisable to use you know tools, appropriate tools so that the perfection can be achieved. Now, coming to a uh, harm hole, harm hole. it can be placed like this, hamul can be placed like this. See, uh, we used uh, for neckline like this, for back hamul like this, then uh, hamul like this. The applications are huge, uh, we apply in neckline, hamul, waist arcs, Say hip lines, any curves we can, we can apply this tool. Uh, this comes in uh, you know various brand, different brand. It is uh, Fairgate which is an international brand and uh, locally we get some other uh, multiple brands which will be like this. Coming to hip curve, we use uh, hip curve to shape hip lines uh, and side seams in case you have uh, waistline shape, it can be used with the waistline curves. Uh, then waist arcs, waist arcs curve lines, then tracing wheel is to trace the pattern drafted which can be moved on the line so that it get traced. This comes with various spikes, this spike, uh, pointed spike, blunt spike and uh, medium you know pointed uh, spikes. So, it rotates so that you can move on the line which traces on other paper other sheet of paper, tracing wheel. Then coming to notch player, 
in pattern making process have uh, a notch player which can be used to make notches to indicate seam allowance, fold lines and balancing of you know parts for example the sleeve pattern will be attached to body portion where the balancing is important the particular notch should align so that the fall of the sleeve will be balanced. So notch player is an important tool to indicate the notches notch is a cut mark as I explained in the uh, text it is an important tool to indicate the cut marks for the seam allowance and uh, fold allowance of course balancing of the part. Owl, owl is a piercing tool to transfer the you know points for example pocket placement where you want to transfer to other uh, side you have left and right uh, pockets in that case you want to in pattern making we develop uh, only the left front from left front you want to transfer to right front in that case you can use the piercing tool to pierce it is uh, of course it is also a carpenter uh, tool who used to draw a lines and mark the pierce the markings in hood. Seam ripper this is in pattern making we use very rarely uh, while going for test fit of any pattern development uh, uh, any seam to be removed or uh, stitch to be removed it, it can be used uh, to remove the stitch or cut the stitch. Stapler you know stapler uh, I use when I cut the you know patterns in layers patterns uh, more than one layer so to avoid you know missing of layers we staple the paper and cut. With these uh, tools and their applications is uh, concluded. Now let us move to you know you apply the tools to get you know perfection and accurate. Uh, of course uh, in the tools we have measurements and uh, curve varies uh, and uh, other supplies. The foremost tool we use in pattern making is uh, measuring tape, measuring tape which has uh, divisions of uh, inches and uh, centimeter and millimeter. Measuring tape is a very very important uh, uh, tool which should be uh, accurate and uh, uh, perfect clear so that you know the application of measurement is uh, is application of measurement is uh, perfect. All right. Uh, coming to this uh, measuring tool, you get various brands. If you buy international brands, yes, it's uh, advisable, where the clarity will be clear and uh, perfect. Let me show the application of uh, tools in appropriate uh, function in the pattern making. Rulers, you know you we get various types of rulers uh, refer to the feet and the foot. I have uh, a foot it is a 6 inch ruler. The rulers have inches and centimeters, 1 foot ruler for short lines. then 2 foot ruler, slightly longer lines. Of course, we, we also have 4 foot rulers which is used for lengthier patterns like a trouser and a dresses. Coming to measuring tape, measuring tape is a very important uh, tool used frequently in pattern making to apply the measurements. Uh, 
these measurements can be applied based on the units we use. Normally, measurement tape comes in various brands. It is advisable to buy a good quality branded measuring tape. This comprising of two sides, one side it is with the measurements in inches and the another side measurements in centimeters. So, that whenever you use inches unit, yes you can measure in inches unit and whenever you use centimeter and millimeters, you can use centimeter and millimeter. I explain these the divisions and centimeters when I do measurement and uh, applications. Coming to triangles, in another important tool uh, which we normally call set squares. It is a set of you know 45 degree and 90 degree, 90 degree and 30 degree. Two sets are there. We often use in pattern making the 90 degree one to draw right angle, right angle or perpendicular line. Perpendicular line, place this so that you get perfect 90 degree line a right angle or perpendicular line. So, very important used in pattern making of course, like measurement tape it is also used very frequently. This also comprising with the angles and uh, measurements in centimeter and inches. Coming to scissors, again very important uh, tool used to cut fabrics and uh, papers. Fabric scissors are normally longer than the paper scissors, which comes with the brass and steel combination, brass handle and steel blades. This is also advisable to buy good branded uh, one, so that the cutting will be accurate. Uh, coming to paper scissors, smaller than the fabric scissor, advisable to you know have smaller than the fabric uh, scissor, so that the turning of paper cutting in deeper curves and all uh, uh, very convenient. Yeah. Curve vary, our body shapes are uh, curved. So, we need to you know shape curve lines in necklines and uh, hammoles, body curves like waist arc, hip arc etcetera, for which we use various types of curves. One among uh, curve vary is a French curve, since it is invented by French designer, it is called French curve, used in pattern making to give perfect curve lines as per the body shape, as per the body curves. So, using French curve, I am going to show you the neckline curves and the hamol curves using a French curve. Which will give you perfect curve lines. See, uh, the back neckline can be curved placing the French curve like this. Selecting appropriate uh, positioning position is very important that you learn by understanding the curves you required or looking for. You, you can use any portion of this curve 
as per the requirement of the curve shapes. Uh, you can use outer edges as well as inner edges. This comes with the two type uh, at present. I have uh, this French curve and this French curve, this and uh, this one. The front neckline can be use this sh shape. So you get uh, half neckline. If you symmetrize this, you, it will be full necklines. Uh, coming to arm hole, I have the slant line here. It can be taken right angle here. Any curves in that case starts with uh, say arm hole can be used uh, this uh, portion, this portion of the French curve. So, so that you get uh, accurate hamol shape, which is an important uh, because hamol is uh, uh, it enhances the look of the body sh body shape at uh, sleeve. Uh, coming to hip curve, hip curve. Since it is you know curved based on the shape you know starting from waist to hip, so exactly it matches exactly it matches to the uh, waist to hip. Hence, it's called a hip curve. Uh, it can be also used to draw waist arc, a blend a uh, true waist arcs, waist arc lines. Uh, for example, side seam of the shirt from uh, chest to waist, then curving to waist arcs. Then uh, tracing wheel, as uh, people are familiar with uh, you know this tool, uh, it comes with uh, various uh, spikes, spike with uh, pointed tips spike with blend tips, use it for different uh, purpose. Uh, if you need to show the point without damaging the fabric or paper, yes uh, you can use blend spikes. It, it just you have to move on the move on the paper line so that it will uh, trace the lines or curves. Notch player, notch player is an important tool to indicate seam allowance, fold allowance and balancing of uh, patterns. Uh, seam allowance, uh, the margin which we use to join two parts together, we have to indicate how much seam allowance to be you know taken to sew. So, in pattern we indicate this uh, seam allowance lines by giving small cut small cut on the paper so that it is easily it can be in indicated to Tyler how much seam allowance to be you know consumed to sieve. Then folds any M lines or uh, um, neck lines or folds in the center front can be indicated give by giving the small cut mark using notch player. Coming to balancing of parts, for example, the attachment of sleeve to the body is to be attached with the balance. If balance is missing, then sleeve fall will be towards left or right or hiking upward. So, the balance to be maintained 
by giving the notch marks in the body pattern as well as sleeve pattern so that the alignment of sleeve pattern notch to the body pattern notch will take place so that the fall of the sleeve will be good. It's one example I quoted uh, whereas we use balancing notch in various other attachments in the garment making. Then coming to owl, it's also you know used by carpenters to give the notch. It's called a piercing tool to pierce the uh, marks to one layer to another layer. We use this and pierce it so that the notch mark will be transferred to other layers. You have come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit you have been given an overview of menswear. This unit reviewed the different body types as well as frequently used uh, terms in pattern making. The module on standard measurements gives proportions of each measurement being used in various body types. Finally, the module on supplies and tools explored the application of various tools used in pattern making. Thank you.